I'd like to call to order the September 25th regular meeting agenda. Would you please join the mayor uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, Lord God, wonderful counselor, thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon our city. We know your word allows us to enter into the new season to build upon the good news and the victory of the past. We ask for your spiritual guidance in meeting new challenges and opportunities for our city. Open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, and continue to give us clarity and wisdom in meeting the desires of our citizens. Continue to strengthen the bridge of communication between our council, our communities, and our staff. And please, Lord Jesus, protect our police and fire and our military serving throughout the world. Thank you. Please be seated. All right, we have one communication item tonight. Uh, Laura Kino and Karen Olson of the Arts and Culture Commission will share information about the Fall Arts and Culture Special Event. And of course, Gailene Oslansky, the Arts and Culture Coordinator, will be presenting. Gailene? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Thank you for having us here this evening. I'm very pleased to be here to introduce Laura Kano, Chairman of our Goodyear Arts and Culture Commission, and Karen Olson, Chairman of our Event and Festival Subcommittee. They're going to be sharing some great information about upcoming arts and culture events this fall. Our first event coming up this Saturday is September on September 30th is the Ballet Under the Stars. And it's been a wonderful uh, cooperation between Newland Community and the City of Goodyear and um, Arizona Ballet. Uh, it's our sixth year that we've had it. Uh, it's a great opportunity for families to come and experience the ballet and the wonderful music and sitting under the stars and enjoying. Uh, it's a night of um, the ballet, but also uh, they work with one of our, uh, some of our children in the Estrella Mountain uh, Elementary School, and so some of those children will be presenting their ballet on, on stage, as well as face painting and a make and take. Um, there's several of our dance schools will also be in the area. So it's uh, a variety of things that are happening, but it's great family night outing. Right after that will be the Art of Cultures Expo and Art Walk, which is a genuine Goodyear event that was developed by the Arts and Culture Commission. This year, in response to survey results, we have a new venue and new time. It's going to be in the evening in, at the Litchfield Community Park. It's a very interactive, experiential event. Uh, lots of dance, music, art, food, and uh, opportunities to join in, and we hope we'll see you at, at that one. And then Chalk Iron in the Park is a chance for our families and everyone to show their skills. We will have about 25 professional Chalk Art um, people there to work with our families, but they um, they all have an opportunity to show off what, what they can do with the um, different, different kinds of chalk that, that, they're, that they're using. Um, they, and we have a lot of professionals that the families can work with them. Um, it's a great time for family fun and, and community experiences. So as you can see, we have a number of signature events coming up. We'll hope that you'll be able to join us as well as the rest of the community. And on behalf of the Arts and Culture Commission, just want to thank you for your ongoing support for arts and culture. Thank you, Gailene. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, Mayor. I think they've shared everything. They're great events. They're all free for the public to attend, and it's just a great way to highlight what great things are happening with arts and culture here in our city. Wonderful. All three of you stay there, because Council normally has something they would like to say to you. So I'm going to start. Yes, Councilman Loretano. Thank you and thank the commission and for anyone that's listening, I've attended all those events and they're just absolutely amazing. Um, 
I like the kickoff of the ballet. It's just beautiful out by the lake and actually gets a little chilly. So people should bring a little sweater. And it's just fun. It's a great family event. You know, you can sit there. The kids can run around. It's just wonderful. So thank your commission for all the hard work for bringing this to our city. Well, Councilman Osborne. Uh, just wanted to add to that that um, you guys have been doing a great job and you know really the whole commission all of the the things that we're seeing with with public art yeah. with your events with your little um, coffee talks with or the at the the wine center or even um, at the library a couple weeks ago with how you know displaying all the art there in the lab just great things it's really highlighting um, a lot of good opportunities for the arts in our city thank you Councilman Pasillo. Again, I appreciate all that you do, uh, and it's a great event. Thank you. Well, I'd like to finish by saying, you know, this has been a real process. When I came a council, we really didn't have an extensive culture and arts program, really. Um, they, we had a small one, and we really didn't fund it so that they can have what you, you are going through now. So we really appreciate it. And the events you are having, it's what is so special about them is there's several, there's all kinds of interesting things. So somebody can always find uh, what 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 pleases them to attend. So we really appreciate it, and I hope people know in our audience that you're volunteers, and that makes a great deal of difference. We really appreciate that time. So let's give them a round of applause. Now is the time for a citizen who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak? All right, then we're going to go ahead and go on. Will the City Clerk please read the consent agenda items six, from 6.1 to 6.3 by title only, please. 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting held on September 11th, 2017. 6.2, approve the budget transfers for fiscal year 18. 6.3, approve the replat for market as Estrella Falls, lot one, subject to a stipulation. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item from this consent agenda? Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? All right, then could I please have a motion? So moved. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff, and I believe it was a second from Councilman uh, uh, Osborne. So open uh, for council discussion. All right, let's vote on this. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The next item on public is a public hearing to rezone 9.97 acres from the pad to the I to 1-1 to the 1-2 zoning districts. So I'm going to open the public meeting, and Karen Craver, Planner 3, will be presenting. Karen? Mayor, yeah. there was actually a public hearing scheduled before that for the use permit for drive through 7.1. Mm -hmm. It says here, the public hearing to re oh, 7.1. Karen, I apologize for that. Let me see. Yes, let me just repeat myself and get in. I'm doing uh, uh, the first item is a public hearing for, I had the second page up, sorry about that. The first item on the public hearing for the use permit for the drive-through use at the Cotton Flower Marketplace for Federico's restaurant. Is that correct? So I'm going to open the public hearing and Karen Craver, Planner 3, will present. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. The subject property is within Cotton Flower Marketplace, located at the southwest corner of Yuma and Cotton Lane. The marketplace is part of the Cotton Flower PAD approved in 1999. To date, LA Fitness has been built there. This is the site plan for the marketplace. And Federico's Mexican restaurant will go on one of the pads fronting on Cotton Lane. And this is the Federico's conceptual site plan. Uh, the building will be just over 3,100 square feet, including a 900 square foot patio, and of course the drive-through lane. 
There are 43 available parking spaces and eight queuing spaces. These are the elevations of the new restaurant. In the elevations, the architecture, material, and colors are all compatible with LA Fitness, and they're in compliance with the city's design guidelines. The use permit request for the drive-through is compatible with LA Fitness and additional planned retail and restaurant uses at the center. It will not be detrimental to the surrounding uses and properties, and it meets access and circulation requirements for a convenience use. To date, we've received no inquiries from members of the public or any of the surrounding property owners, and staff and the Planning Commission are recommending approval subject to two stipulations in your staff report. That's my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is here as well if you have Thank questions you. of them. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, then I'm going to close the public hearing. Can I have a motion a second to approve the use permit to allow the drive-through use at the southwest corner of the Cotton Lane and Yuma Road, subject to stipulations? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Vice Mayor Campbell and a second from Councilman Osborne. Open for council discussion. Councilman Fazillo. Karen, can you back up just a couple slides there on the drawing? One more, one more, right there. Uh, you mentioned the stip uh, considerable Again, there goes my memory again, but the, the STIP has to do with the traffic flow that they agree to. What is the traffic flow they've agreed to? Just, um, Mayor, if I may. Yes, you may. Councilman Pazillo, it's just the, the during the use permit process, we had reviewed this conceptual site plan and evaluated the traffic flow through the driveway, through the drive-through lane and around the site and into the shopping center and back out and it all works very well and is in compliance with standards. So we're just stipping that the formal site plan match what was on the conceptual site plan. So the formal site plan does match? Yes. So the formal site plan that was approved does match the drawing? Am it, I, is, okay. it is currently in process being reviewed, but yes, it does match this drawing. Okay, maybe I'm, I'm just a little slow tonight, but where is the pat traffic flow? Am I on this drawing right here? Okay, it's going to okay, gonna go in with a dark. Okay. Show me, go ahead and show me with you. The uh, traffic will come in off of Cotton Lane on this driveway, and the cars can either come down here and go through the drive through, or they can if they wanted to go all the way around and go through the drive through So the, the one that's in review right now, once it gets adopted, will match what we're talking about right now? It will. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilman Osborne? Is the applicant here? Yes, they are. Oh. I just wanted to say uh, congratulations that it was a very nice, modern-looking building, and I, I really like it. Welcome to Goodyear. Councilman Hampton? Yeah, I also want to say welcome to Goodyear. I think it's a great look and uh, definitely a, a great start to that area right there as well. It's a great compliment to that, that section, that area. So I just live north of there, so I'll probably be eating there. And um, the only question I had for one of the design questions, I know it's east facing with the free, the 303 going to extend that way. I know there's some metal accents on these on this building. Is there any, is it polished metal? Is there any shine that would come off the sun that would, to track someone as they're going down the 303? Uh, it's kind of an off the Mayor, wall maybe question, but I'm just curious. <laughs> Mayor, if I may, Councilman Hampton, I'd like to ask the applicants to address that if I could. They should take credit for this building as well. It's a great, uh, it's a great look. I mean, I like it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Regards to your question regarding the uh, the metal, uh, it wouldn't be uh, polished metal, but something that would shine to the to the freeway would be something that would be painted. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, have any reflected light coming in from into the into the road. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's all I was asking. It looks very modern and a great great look of the building. Thank you. That's all I have. Welcome, Councilman Loretano. 
Oh, before you head back to your seat, you don't need to come up. I just want to say welcome, and I, it's a great-looking project. It's very will be very successful, I'm sure, down there. I just live up in Australia, and it'll, it's just a short hop to get down there, so I'm sure we'll be seeing y'all there too. So welcome. Any other comments? Well, I just want to say welcome. It's going to be great to have you, your city, part of our our, our business community. So time to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. I believe the ayes have it. All right, now we're down to 7.2, and this is the public hearing to rezone 9.97 acres from the pad to the I-1 to the I-2 to the I zoning districts. So I'm gonna open the public me meeting, and uh, Karen Craver, Planner 3, will be presenting again. Karen? Thank you, Mayor. The 10 acres being rezoned are on the south side of McDowell, halfway between Citrus to the east and Perryville to the west. The Perryville prison is to the north and the I-10 is to the south. There is a self-storage facility to the east and a landscape and sand supply company to the west. In 2007, the property was zoned PAD as New West Business Park. And this is the PAD conceptual plan with underlying commercial on the McDowell frontage and light industrial on the remainder of the property. And although there was commercial zoning, because of the proximity of the property to Loop Air Force Base, few commercial uses could actually go there. So consequently, nothing is developed on the property. So the current owner, GY10, is proposing this a little over three acres of light industrial and a little less than seven acres of general industrial. So there will be no PAD and the development will simply follow the city's industrial development regulations and the city's design guidelines. The application meets the city requirements for approval of the rezoning, consistency, suitability, compatibility, no public concerns having been voiced. And staff and the Planning Commission are recommending approval subject to the three stipulations on your screen and in your staff report. That's my presentation. I am happy to answer any questions you may have. And again, the applicant is here for questions as well. Thank you, Karen. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? I'm going to close this public hearing, and will the city clerk please read ordinance number 17-1362 by title only, please. Adopt ordinance number 17-1362, conditionally rezoning approximately 9.97 gross acres located on the south side of West McDowell Road between North Citrus Road on the east and North Perryville Road on the west, known as New West Business Park, by rezoning 3.34 acres from final planned area development pad to I-1 light industrial and by rezoning 6.63 acres from final planned area development pad to I-2 general industrial, amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, providing for corrections, providing for severability, providing for an effective date, and providing for penalties. Thank you. Can I please have a motion? So moved. And a second? To second. Approve, and approve the ordinance 13-1362. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff and a second from Councilman Hampton. So open for council discussion. Councilman Stiff. Uh, the, uh, to the applicant, th you know, thanks for your continued drive to make this, uh, to, to make this work. Um, I think to the public, this seems like, um, like a major change, but it's really not. It's industrial to industrial. Um, it just provides a little bit more flexibility to get some development out there. Um, so for that, I'm, I'm grateful and we'll support it. Thanks. Councilman Hampton. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you also for the rezoning. It'd be nice to get something in between that spot. I think in the notes it talked about it's overdue and it was the comment in there. So it's, it's good to have it there. The question I had was in between the two properties, there's two tanks up there. Is that another owner or like a gas line or gas? Well, Mayor, if I may. Yes, you may. Councilman, the little cutout up at mm -hmm. McDowell. That's a, I believe it's an American Water Company well site. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Councilman Osborne? I'm not very good at 
determining feet. So um, what is the distance between the, the I2? So you have C2, that's, that's um, the buffer between Canada Village and the I2 zoning. Do you know approximately what that distance is? The reason I ask because I know some of the items that we have on the I2 um, users that can be located in those things, I'm wondering the distance between that residence and a, a potential user. Since I don't know who the users are, so that's why I'm asking what. Mayor, if I may. You may. Councilwoman, I would, I would believe that the width of the self-storage facility is probably about 400 to 500, about 400 feet. Um, and when we notified property owners within 500 feet of the boundary of this rezoning, it only went to that the street right there. Those houses within so they Canada were in Village. Within the 500. Yeah, just just that that one side of 181st Lane. Okay. So yeah, about 400 feet, I'd say, is what's in between. Okay. So, so there are certain. Do is there a user known for the I2 area? No. We are not aware that okay. there's a user but, yet. But there are some items that could not go there because it's only 400 feet. Is, is Okay, that's all. Thank you. Councilman Hampton, did you have a question? All right. Any other? All right, let's, uh, council discussion is done. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Campbell? Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Fazillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, at 7.3 on business is to hold a public hearing for an amendment to the Australia Commons Plan Area Development. Open public hearing, and Katie, you're presenting for us this evening. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, staff actually respectfully requests that we continue this item to the October 2nd meeting. We are working with the applicant on a few of the stipulations still. This was a request by staff that the applicant um, was agreed to, um, and they said it didn't impact their timeline, and they were happy to work with us on some of that. So we would bring this item back to you um, next Monday um, and um, continue to the date specific so we can preserve the notice. There was nobody who spoke at the meeting at the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. All right. Council, we need, do need a motion a second to continue the public hearing October 2nd, uh, 2017. So I hear a motion. So moved. A second? Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff and a second by Councilman Hampton. Um, so this will stay. And thank you very, very much for uh, coming. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right, the next item in business, 7.4, is a public hearing to consider the amendments to the Las Ventas. I never say that right, do I? Las Ventanas? Ventanas? I don't know it. Ventanas. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Ventanas, final pad, modifying stipulations. We're going to open the public hearing. We have a Karen Craver, plan of three to present. Karen? Thank you, Mayor. The Las Ventanas PAD, approved in 2006, will be located on this 160 acres at the southeast corner of Perryville and Yuma Road. And just to give an idea of how Las Ventanas will develop, this was a concept plan that was submitted with the preliminary plat currently in process for 412 lots. This current application is to modify stipulations of that 2006 PAD. Step 17 required 25% payments towards three signals at half mile locations. But the payments were tied to 80% build out of the project. And that type of, of timing is really kind of hard to administer when you're talking an over 400 unit project. 
the applicant is requesting that the payments be tied to recordations of plats within the project. So that would be very easy to administer. Step 18 required 50% payments for two signals at quarter mile locations around the project. And the city no longer requires quarter mile traffic signals. They uh, actually tend to impede the flow of traffic as opposed to improve it. So the applicant is requesting that step 18 be deleted altogether. Step 55 required acquisition of property at the corner of Perryville and Yuma that wasn't part of the PAD, and then they were required to construct roadway improvements adjacent to that property. So the applicant is requesting that the city obtain easements for those improvements adjacent to that small parcel, and then Las Ventanas will construct the improvements. This is a, a graphic that the applicant provided us that, that shows the steps and the areas that they're related to. The three half mile signals will be those signals at the corners of the project. And the two quarter mile signals that they're asking to delete are Midway on Perryville and Midway on Yuma. And that 0.9 acre parcel right at the corner of Yuma and Perryville is, is this parcel that wasn't part of the PAD. And the applicant, of course, is asked to modify the STIP so that they're not responsible for acquiring that particular parcel. And staff and the Planning Commission are recommending modifying STIP 17 as requested deleting STIP 18 as requested, modifying STIP 55 as requested, and then there are minor modifications to 13 and 15 that are related to the components of what are half street improvement construction, and they will reflect the modification to 55, so they're all tied together, those three. So we are recommending approval as indicated, and that's my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And once again, the applicant is here tonight. Thank you, Karen. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, then I'm gonna close the public hearing. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 17-1364 by title only, please? Adopt ordinance number 17-1364, amending the final planned area development pad zoning for Las Ventanas, comprised of approximately 159.31 acres, located east of Perryville Road, south of Yuma Road, and north of Durango Street, to modify conditions 13, 15, 17, and 55, and delete condition 18 in ordinance number 2006-1001, amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, severability, and an effective date. Thank you, can I have a motion a second to approve the ordinance 17-1364? So moved. Second. Okay, Councilman, uh, Councilman Lortano made the motion and second was Councilman Stipp, open for council discussion. Councilman Hampton. I just had a quick question. So the corner of Yuma and Prairieville, that little corner at the top there is that the one we're gonna to have to in the future figure out a way to get the light into there once we figure out the was it the ADEQ requirements am I off am I off when I was reading that Mayor, if I That's may question I can rephrase the question if I need to <laughs> the the 0.9 acre parcel at the corner is owned by a different entity yeah. and the city has agreed to work with that entity to try to acquire easements from them so that Las Ventanas can go in and construct the completion of the roadway improvements. You know, obviously they're gonna construct improvements on Perryville and on Yuma for the remainder of their property, but by the city getting the easements, Las Ventanas can complete it right up to the intersection and in the they will also be making a contribution and in lieu payment towards the signal at that location. Um, you had also mentioned ADEQ. There had been some contamination on that 
small piece of property from some old use that had been there, had yeah. some tanks, tanks or something, but it was isolated to that property, and it is our understanding that ADEQ is out there actually now working on cleaning it up. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Council Member Loretana? I just have a question. I don't know maybe if it's you or Rebecca that could answer this about the stoplights. Um, the one on 185th Avenue, I, I guess, and I, you, you said it changed, so I'm not really sure exactly how to ask that, that it, we don't do a quarter mile anymore. But if I'm, right now it's not gonna be a problem because there's not a lot of houses and traffic there. But let's say that when that area builds up and it's all built up and other developments come in, and if you wanna make a left in or rather than just a right in, right out, do you foresee that would be a problem that later we would need one if we give it up now, or is that something we just wouldn't do just because it's the quarter miler? Thank you. I hope that made sense. <laughs> um, thank you, Council Member Loretano. Um, from in the foreseeable future and also the horizon of the traffic study, we do not see a need, okay. nor do we um, anticipate having signals at quarter miles typically. That's not to say that wouldn't be the situation in certain cases, but we absolutely do not see a need at this uh, for this development at this time. In addition to um, the TIA not supporting it, we also look at the dwelling units and the traffic that that would generate, and ultimately it's not a necessity. Okay, even with the commercial there, still mm -hmm. we're good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Councilman Steer. On the traffic light issue, uh, I think I share the concern that this is going to turn into 161st or 165th on Van Buren, people trying to exit. Um, it, is the street cut there for them to traverse east and west in the, in the plan of things from both uh, Yuma Road and Perryville? Because Perryville will start to get quite busy. So um, if I understand your uh, question, Council Member Stipp, is you're asking us in the future when that roadway is developed and the median is installed, will there be access for a full access to that median? And yes, there will be. Okay, so, um, and from what you, the answer that you just gave is this development in and of itself should not generate the type of traffic that the one that I referred to is, is that correct? In your crystal ball? In my crystal ball, it was also a situation with the other one is there were no other access points. And in this case, you have um, a number of access points depending on the maneuver, uh, maneuver that the driver would wanna take, whether they're going east, west, north, or south. Okay, and then uh, I think this last question is for Karen. The commercial, property on the corner there owned by the same property owner that owned, was doing Las Ventanas? Mayor, if I may, yes, Councilman Stipp, it is. So I'm gonna look then, how soon before you come back to rezone the commercial piece? <laughs> I, I don't even know if I want you to answer that. Was, but it, was that just a comment? I think that's just question? rhetorical. I, um, <laughs> I think at some point, these small commercial pieces were gonna end up getting chewed up by residential. Um, we've experienced this in a number of other places. So um, I guess I'm just anticipating that you'll come back for a request to make this more residential um, as opposed to- You have a crystal ball that I don't have? No, but I'm just, I'm looking at all the other little tiny commercial slots that we have that are getting converted from commercial to residential, so. Any other comments? Yes. Vice Mayor Campo. I'd like to ask Rebecca. Uh, you need to get in the microphone because I can't hear you. I would like to ask Rebecca a question, please. Um, on, in the narrative, they're talking about uh, how the developer is going to be responsible for half the street and half median improvements. Who's going to do the other half? It's uh, typically the developer on the other side. Um, per state statute, we're only allowed to require the developer to improve their frontage and their half street frontage. So we may end up with a street that's halfway um, asphalted and brought up to standard and the other half may not be. And, and I think the, the reason why I'm bringing that up is because we have had roads on Indian School 
to the developer made it four lanes and all of a sudden it's two lanes and and it takes years to get that all to be the same width. Uh, yes, um, council member, um, if, if that were to be developed prior to a developer across the street coming in, it would be city funded. Okay, that's what I'm, thank you. All questions finished? All right, roll call vote please. Council member Osborne? Aye. Council member Pazillo? Aye. Council member Loretano? Aye. Council member Stipp? Aye. Council member Hampton? Aye. Ma Vice mayor Campbell? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries seven zero. All right, thank you. 7.5 on business is to consider approving the Rosewood Golf Villas final plat stipulation modification. Katie Wilkin, planning manager, 2%. Once more, Katie. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Rosewood Golf Villas is, re re sorry. Rosewood Golf Villas is located in the Golf Villas area of Astria. It's located west of Estrella Parkway, south of San Miguel Drive, along Golf Club Drive. The final plat was approved in 2014. Mm -hmm. And there was a note on the final plat that stated that development had to be consistent with the stipulations of the zoning and the preliminary plat. It was kind of a catch-all stipulation. Um, the, the plans did show, as you can see in this conceptual landscape plan, that the community would include a pool. Since that time, the Presidio pool has been built in the Asturia area. So there is now a pool located a mile and a half north of the site and a pool located a mile and a half site, south. Um, a pool is an expense for a community and for a 61 lot community that could be a significant HOA fee to maintain that pool as council knows from maintaining our own pools. Um, and so it was requested by the developer to um, remove the pool amenity and replace it with a similar type of amenity um, that would be a benefit to the community but not quite so expensive since the residents of Rosewood will have access to the other pools in Estrella. When we researched the issue, we did find this note that technically, um, since we included it as a stipulation of the preliminary plat that it provide a pool, that it was required, so we would have to come to city council to remove that. Staff did research it, and we di don't, didn't find anything that staff or council required this pool because of a density bonus or um, for any reason. It appears simply that um, the plan was to include a pool so we stipulated that they would have the pool and then we just carried on those stipulations to the final plot. Therefore, that being said, because there are access points to other um, amenities, we would recommend approving it for the pool. The second item that is um, on this agenda item is to add a stipulation regarding um, notification of fire lanes. And simply what happened is, um, after this plat went through approval, we changed our policy and um, we require additional fire lane notification. And in instances like Rosewood, where the street's a little narrower and they can't park on the street, we just wanna make sure that there's proper notification and signage per our fire code and engineering standards. And so we're just putting that as a stipulation and it provides notice to any future possible home builders and residents that there is no parking on the street. There is community parking provided in the plat, um, and and that concludes my presentation. So, with that, staff recommends approval of the modifications to the stipulations as presented. I'd be happy to answer any other? questions. Any other? You have a question, Councilman Pizzell? Uh Yes, but don't you have to? Oh, don't you have to close the hearing or anything first? Okay, I thought you had it. <clears throat> oh, no. <clears throat> okay. No, I am not feeling well. Yes. Could somebody take over sure. for me, please? It, it's nothing more than an upset stomach, so just fire sit there. Um, but, uh, okay. Uh, but I have felt like I can't hold it back much more, and uh, uh, so I think it's best if I go home. So, so Vice Mayor, you have the floor, all right? Sorry. No, I 
probably could stop and pull out. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry about that. Are we on seven point five? I'm sorry. We are at 7.5, and the next item would be um, asking if there were any speaker cards. All right. Um, would anyone in the audience like to speak on this item? There is none. Then may I have a motion and a second to approve the amendment to the stipulations of approval applicable to the final plot for Rosewood Golf Villas at Estrella Mountain Ranch, approved by the City Council on December 15th, 2014, by revising stipulation number one to allow development of common open space area track J as a fitness garden instead of a swimming pool, and add a new stipulation number 20, which clarifies the requirements for local streets constructed with a cross section that is less than the City of Goodyear minimum street cross section. May I have a motion? So is, there, is there a second? Second. It has been moved by Council Member Stipp and seconded by Council Member Hampton. Open for Council discussion. Council Member Pizzillo. Katie, is this, is this going to be a gated community? Thank you. I see a yes kind of going there. All right. You had mentioned there's an, another pool that's accessible to this final plant. Is that pool something they're going to be paying for? Is it something in another neighborhood they have access to? The reason why I'm asking is if, if it's a gated community and you take out the pool, they've got to leave the community to go to another community for that pool. Is that a fair assumption? Thank you, Vice Mayor, Council Member no, Pizzillo. I am actually not positive if it's a gated community or not. Um, but the pool I was referring to was the Presidio pool that the in, that's in the Montecito area that the entire Estrella community, everyone who's part of the Estrella HOA pays fees to be a part of. So yes, they would have to likely drive. I think it's like a mile and a half away. So it'd be an awfully long walk. Okay. So this is the final plant. There is no houses or anything in there right now so that there is nobody that has purchased anything that assumes that there's going to be a pool in there right now. Okay, so when they go to sell, since there won't be a pool there, I assume that they're going to notify the people that this has changed. So if it's a enclosed community that wanted a pool, that they're not going to have. Is that correct? That that's correct. There, everyone will. Anyone purchasing a home here will know upfront that there was there is not going to be a pool. Okay. Thank you. Is there further discussion, uh, Council Member Lurentano? Uh, just just so people that aren't aware, the, these. The people who buy in here are going to be paying the same HOA fees, so they'll have access to both the Star Point and to the Presidio. And the Presidio is the heated pool year round. Um, so this would just be an extra fee for their pool, like a, a second HOA, right. they would have to pay for that. So I'm, I'm pretty good with that, um, just in case the public was listening. I wanted to make sure they understood that even though it's gated like the golf club, they still get to use the other pool. Um, I, I think this is a great project. I know there's been several people have looked up in Australia and looked for products like this, and they don't exist up there. So I think it'll be pretty good, and I, I'm okay with the changes. I, I don't know what what fitness garden means, though. That was my question. I, I don't think pickleball would go really that's big up there. Exactly what I was we will pass that if, along. If the applicant, if Pete Tyke is here, garden. pickleball. Garden. That's pickleball what we hear garden. up there all the time. <laughs> pickleball in the garden. How's that? Okay. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Item 7.6. The next item on the business is to consider a job creation agreement for Ball Corporation. Michelle Lowry, our Economic Development Director, will present.
evening, Vice Mayor, members of Council. I'm very pleased to be in front of you this evening to discuss a job creation agreement for your consideration between the City of Goodyear and Ball Metal Beverage Container Corporation, which will be the official name of the Goodyear facility. It will be abbreviated at times in this presentation as BMBCC. I'll be giving a short presentation and we'll answer any questions, but I wanted to let you know that we have some special guests with us this evening. First is Gordon Backman, who will be the Goodyear uh, plant manager for BMBCC in Goodyear. Also, we have Scott McCarty, who is the Director of Communications and Engagement for the Ball Corporation Metal P Beverage Packaging Division. They have traveled from Colorado to be here with us this evening. Um, they would, or Scott would like to make a few comments after our discussion, and um, they are available for questions as well. We have spent most of the afternoon with the team. Scott has been busy meeting with representatives from Luke Air Force Base to discuss a partnership with the base as well as hiring veterans, so thank you. We, see, we greatly appreciate that. Gordon has been busy checking out the company's site, which we will describe here in just a minute. I also wanted to introduce Marcus Panishevich from Deloitte, thank you, who consulted on the project for the company. First, let's talk about the company. Ball Beverage Packaging North and Central is the leader in specialty beverage, metal beverage packaging and is part of a global beverage packaging business. The parent company, Ball Corporation, is based in Broomfield, Colorado. The visual here is of the cans that BMBCC will produce at its Goodyear facility, except for the 12 ounce cans. However, exact sizes will change with the market demand. The key here is that their uh, high tech equipment will allow the flexibility to switch to different sizes. Now a bit about the site selection process. In January 2017, two sites in Goodyear were shortlisted for the selection. Several months later, after negotiations with both Goodyear and Nevada location, BMBCC made its decision to locate in Goodyear over the Nevada location. The company chose the 29-acre site on the northeast corner of Montecito Avenue and North Cotton Lane at the PB303 Business Park. Here is a map which shows the location between Sub-Zero and Dick's Sporting Goods to the north. So let's now talk about negotiations for the job creation agreement that's before you this evening. On the BMBCC side, the contract before you this evening would mandate that the company create 130 full-time positions, which provide health care coverage, with a cumulative annual wage, or average wage, excuse me, of $60,000 a year. To give you some perspective, the median wage in Maricopa County is less than $41,000. So this is a very high quality project. Further, BMBCC must make an investment of $240 million, which is the largest first stage investment in Goodyear's history. Machinery and equipment for the project is estimated to be valued at about $200 million of that $240 million number. This $240 million number is key for several reasons. One of those reasons is that the value of the investment uh, determines two things. One is the plan review and permitting fees that are assessed by the city. And secondly, it helps determine the economic impact for the project that I'll get to shortly. First, the plan review and permitting fees. Plan review fees, uh, just to simply review, are what the city assesses a business for our planning, our engineering, and our building safety divisions to review the business construction plans. Permitting fees are what the city assesses a business to construct the building. Our city's ordinance calls for the calculation of these fees to be based on the valuation of the project. Thus, those with larger investments cost more than those with smaller investments. This does not necessarily make that, or not necessarily mean that more staff time is due to these projects and it takes more staff time to review these projects. Um, however, they cost more simply due to the valuation. This is especially the case in this scenario with BMBCC as the machinery is the cause for the large valuation and therefore the assessment. The plan review and permitting fees to be paid by BMBCC are estimated to be more than $2.3 million. If this project were to be built in a neighboring city, the fees would not nearly be this amount. 
As a result, the job creation agreement calls for a waiver or a reimbursement of up to $1.5 million in plan review and permitting fees. And again, this is not a check that the city would be handing the company, BMBCC, but a rather revenue that we would not be collecting. Also in the job creation agreement, the city would agree to support the activation of a foreign trade zone site for the BMBCC project. The site is actually part of the approved magnet site uh, for the FTZ um, for the PB303 business park. So the non-objection letters for the taxing jurisdictions have already been submitted. So that process, what would simply happen for this is the city manager would be able to write a letter um, of a non-objection for this. So why is this a great project for Goodyear and for BMBCC as well? We have conducted a third party economic analysis as we do for each project which we present to you and that the analysis showed the following things. First, the direct revenue to the city of Goodyear for the project itself. That includes one time and ongoing tax revenues to the city, which will result in more than $4 million of direct revenue. And to the city, that's to the city over five years, that's the life of this job creation agreement. Uh, and then the $4 million is net of any reductions from the job creation agreement. So that's net, that's not include, that's, that's including, that's what they bring to the table, including the reductions they would get for this agreement. And the school districts, another point I wanted to make, the school districts, which I will actually get eight times the revenue they're currently getting on this property over those five years. So that's just the direct revenue to the city overall, including direct and indirect economic impacts, the BMBCC project will generate more than 650 million over the life of this agreement. That's five years. This is not just a huge nebulous number, but it is an impact for our community measuring direct jobs and spending from those employees and their families. Further, the more we create this opportunity for our residents, the closer we get to having more of the amenities and other things our residents so desire. So what is BMBCC getting out of the deal? I'm hoping that Scott will could talk a little bit about that, but I know um, that one of the reasons that uh, they chose Goodyear is our skilled workforce and our quality, great community for its employees and our business environment as well. Thanks to everyone. I would be glad to take questions from you, Vice Mayor and Council Members, and then Scott would like to say a few words and answer any questions you might have as well. Thank you. All right, are there any speaker cards? No, Vice Mayor. Would anyone in the audience like to speak at this time? Will the city clerk please read resolution number 17-1827 by title only? Adopt resolution number 17-1827 approving, authorizing, and directing the city manager to execute a job creation agreement for Ball Metal Beverage Container Corporation, BMBCC, authorizing city staff to take actions consistent with terms of resolution and agreement and providing for an effective date. Can I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. It's been moved by Council Member Osborne and seconded by Council Member Hampton. Open for Council discussion. Council Member Pizzillo. Uh, listen, uh, Michelle, I appreciate the presentation. We had a d discussion earlier, and I believe you covered pretty much covered everything that I asked you in our discussion. Uh, the one question I do have, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear, is that in essence, the way I kind of sum this down, and I look at direct, indirect is, to me, it's okay, but I prefer the direct, is that uh, we give up uh, 1.5 in revenue to gain 4.1 in revenue. In, in, in nice short, so the ROI, I, I kind of like, right, from that perspective. Uh, but the other one question I think you answered, I just want to make sure I heard it right, that uh, we do not need any additional resources to move this product forward because we're going to utilize our current resources uh, and, uh, and, and uh, I guess, budgeted funds to move this project forward. Is, is that a fair Vice Mayor and Councilmember Pazillo, that is correct. Okay. Then the only other comment I have is I think this is going to be a great partnership moving forward. I like the ROI, and I think you're going to enjoy your stay here in Goodyear. So, uh, again, welcome aboard. Councilmember Stipp. Since I got um, pushed out of the ability to do it earlier <laughs> three times, I want Sorry. to be the first to say thank 
thank you for choosing our city. Welcome. Um, we are uh, we are very excited about uh, about the partnership. You you're joining a, a great uh, neighborhood, if you will, uh, from a business perspective. You got some great uh, great neighbors up there, and uh, we're going to do everything that we can to. Uh, provide you with a place for your employees to, to live and to shop and to eat. Uh, that's our job and our commitment to you. So thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to uh, your comments when we get done. Council member. Oh, Hampton, yeah, you want sure. to start? So yeah, th yeah, once again, same thing Bill said, welcome to, welcome to Goodyear. We're excited to have you and uh, look forward to having you do a lot of business here in Goodyear and bring lots of employees to Goodyear. And it's a, it's a great, it's another great business in the in the area that we're talking about as well. So definitely welcomed welcomed uh, um, addition to our community. So thank you so much for choosing Goodyear and being welcome to the welcome to the city. So thank you, Councilmember Lorentano. You, you just keep hearing this, so it, it welcome, and we're very um, appreciative. I think it's gonna be a great partnership, and to have you all here, and we look forward to seeing you open and 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 grow with our city. So welcome. Council member uh, Osborne not much left to say but you know your your investment to our city um, definitely is is welcomed and um, it's something that I think uh, you will find beneficial to uh, your own business but you're you're not investing just in the city but also in people and uh, in, in a place that we dearly love and so uh, I'm glad you recognize that and you recognize this city as um, something that has a bright future. And you certainly are on a logistic hub that uh, we know a lot of people are looking at. So uh, we're thrilled to have you and uh, thank you for being here. Michelle, would our guests like to address us at this time? Gentlemen, would you like to come forward before we vote so we can welcome you again? Welcome. It's Arizona tea, look out. Thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> Madam Vice Mayor and, and Council members and members of the staff, thanks for making some time for us tonight. Um, you know, we're very excited about this project. Uh, Gordon is going to be the main person you'll end up working with going forward. I, I'm just here to say one little corporate comment. Michelle did a great job explaining our business. You know, in North America, we have 22 beverage packaging plants right now. And of those 22 plants, about 75% came to us through acquisition. So the last Greenfield plant that we built new was in the late 80s in Texas. So it's been a while for us. So you can imagine we are as excited as you are about building a plant here. Um, we looked at a number of places to move and picked Goodyear for a lot of reasons that you know very well. And uh, we also are very aware that when we build a new plant, we are part of the community. And that's always been very important at Ball Metal Beverage and our parent company, Ball Corporation. So we're excited about this. We're excited about welcoming new people to the, to the plant. We're excited about our, all of our facilities and about our products, which is, this is an example of one of them. Uh, many people think of these being made by the actual customer, Arizona Iced Tea in this case, but we make these cans and ends and also bottles um, and make billions of them every year. They're 100% recyclable, and I look forward to working with you on getting these cans up there and replacing the plastic bottles we've got <laughs> in the future. So thank you very much, Gordon and I, and Marcus are happy to answer any questions. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we want to welcome all of you to Goodyear, and thank you for picking our city because we think you've made the right choice. Thank you very much. All right. Um, may I have a motion and a second? So oh, I've already done it. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so excited to be mayor. I don't know how to do it. I'll prove it again. Huh? All right. <laughs> then then um, may we please have a roll call vote. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Osborne? Aye. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Vote carries 6 0. Motion carried. Thank you. All right, we're going to move to the information items. Does council have any comments, communications, or reports on current events you would like to share? All right, General, uh, Council Member Osborne, we'll start with you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, actually, I see that we have some Cub Scouts out in the audience, and I just wanted to share with the council a couple weeks ago that I had presented to a Cub Scout troop working on uh, one of their badges. and. Um, it was interesting because I had had said to the boys, 
you know, what do you think are the interest, uh, the issues uh, for our city? And a young man did uh, make a comment that um, he said, oh, well, I'm sure it's air pollution. And he said, because I couldn't breathe last, last winter. Um, he obviously had some breathing issues. And so, you know, it was, it was, it's great to hear uh, from all ages of life of what's important to them in their city and what they look at as being issues. And uh, so I just uh, think that it's, it's outstanding to have, to have scouts and to have uh, young children that are really looking at uh, what affects their future. So I um, wanted to just let the council know about that. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have anything to share? All right, then I will ask, does the city manager have anything to report? Uh, Vice Mayor, members of the council, and again, I'm Scott and Gordon. We are so, uh, we're on cloud nine, so thank you for the investment, as council pointed out. I know staff is really uh, very anxious to work closely with you, and you will see that, that, that um, uh, we work hard, and, and we will um, absolutely uh, look at you as a partner in this, so thank you. Um, Vice Mayor and council, just one item and that is October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And at the October 2nd council meeting, so next Monday, we'll actually have a proclamation that will be read um, uh, declaring October is, is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. We will also be lighting three of our buildings. It'll be City Hall. It'll also be the library and the uh, police operations building in purple throughout the whole month of October. So you'll see those growing up I believe it's what this weekend, and then and then uh, it will remain for the entire month. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, is there any staff summary of follow-up or action required? Uh, none that I have, Vice Mayor. Does Council have any inquiries of staff? Council Member Skip. I'm trying to look for it, um, Mr. Dalkey. The we received. Uh, I should have done this earlier. An email regarding the percolating Basin. drainage things up mm -hmm. in Australia that I don't think we got a staff follow up on. Will, will, we, will we be getting one? Um, and thank you, Vice Mayor and Council Member Stipp. So we did respond back to uh, Ms. McPhillan that, that uh, raised that, that issue. Where we're at, just very quickly, is the HOA uh, is actually responsible for. Um, doing those improvements, it's in their budget. It got slightly delayed um, because uh, as they were going in the field and actually doing construction, found that there was a, a, a challenge, I would say. So they're, they're doing a tweak to the design to make them that much more effective, but they are planning on going forward with those. We did communicate that to um, Ms. McBillan as well. Okay, thanks. Is there any other inquiries? Does anyone have a future agenda item you wish to bring up at this time? All right. The next meeting will be a regular meeting on October 2nd at 6 o'clock. And just to remind Council, on October 13th, we'll have a strategic planning retreat, Part 1, at 11.30 in the morning. And on October 14th, we'll have a strategic planning retreat, Part 2, at 1 o'clock. And October 16th will be a work session at 5.00. There being, oh, before I adjourn the meeting, we all want to wish Mayor Lord um, good wishes. We hope she's feeling better, and um, you can all tell her that we behaved. <laughs> so, yes, there being no further business, the meeting is now adjourned. <laughs>